so, we completed the first week of 2021, and what we had was the darkest day in American democracy. A dismal jobs report that was far worse than expected, a blue sweep of government, and the highest levels of coronavirus cases and deaths. The most important was that the Fed said no taper anytime soon. And along with the current promise of $600, we have the promise of $2,000 checks and more and more. This seemed to spark the reflation trade in the stock market, along with cryptos and higher bond yields as small cap stocks surged. And in other news, reports circulated that Senator Manchin is going to spoil the party by saying he would not support $2,000 checks. And of course, the stock market immediately fell. And in other news, Biden saves the day later on with promises of lots of money for all. We'll have a $15 minimum wage, and that means my paycheck is going to go up. Biden also called for trillions of dollars in immediate further fiscal support, including increased direct payments. But, in his own words, the price tag will be high. What he didn't say is that even if he acts now, and he will act as soon as possible, is that things will still get much, much worse later. At which point it won't be trillions, but quadrillions in the final race to the debasement bottom begins. No, that doesn't mean your mother's basement. It means that the value of your hard-earned money is going to go down quickly. More quickly than any other time in the history of this country. But hey, everything is awesome in this kabuki theater. And in other news... Twitter closed President Trump's account permanently while Kylie Jenner has unfollowed Sophie Ritchie and more close friends. But don't even get me started on Kanye West or Kim Kardashian. So, let's take a look at the charts. As you look at this chart, realize that investors 20 years ago were paying 10 times revenues or higher for 44 stocks in the S&P 500 index. At that time, that was mind-numbing dumb. At some point, the market did run out of fools and the Nasdaq subsequently fell 83%. But hey, today, there are nearly 60 companies in the S&P 500 that currently trade at more than 10 times revenues. It's the greater fool theory. But no one knows when the market reaches that very last fool. Just make sure it's not you. And we're now looking at the four-year weekly chart on the spiders, the SPY. And as you can see here from that bottom, we've come all the way up here. What a ride. Now pay attention to this area here. And in comparison to that area there, this area, and then this area. Moving on down into the volume doesn't really tell us too much, but the MAC does. Right here is a melt-up. We're not done. We're still melting up. But this was a melt-up here. And look what happened. And this was a melt-up here. And look what happened. And this was a melt-up here. And look what happened. So, we're on our way. It's only a matter of time. Be cautious. Moving down here, you can see in the histogram, relatively low rise, but these are deceiving. The market is in a melt-up. On down here, price rate of change, you can see that uh, we had a nice spike up there, but that is moving on down there, divergence. Same thing here in the RSI. From that point there, moving on down. We did break up through here, but it's still in a downward trend. Moving here into the stochastics, not going to tell us too much. We are at the top. We're in the oversold territory, but we can bounce along here for a while at least. Same thing as the Williams. So moving on back up here to the price chart. One last check. Just make sure that when the music stops, there's a chair for you. And for today, we're the channel that keeps up with the Kardashians. Thank you.